see my screen now? I see something orange. Yeah. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Steve, did you find the questions box? No, I'm looking. I had it here. Um, if you go to view questions, it'll turn it off, and you can view questions again, and it'll sometimes come back. Also, if you just click on the console, sometimes they'll come back. Anyway, as uh, would be normal, uh, we ran into a little bit of a tech. I'm looking at the raw camera, too. Uh, we ran into a little bit of a technical issue with like our, our normal setup. But it's OK, because uh, we just jumped in on my laptop, and we're uh, kind of ready to roll. So uh, it's a good thing I'm not doing uh, the whole presentation. I'm just going to be talking a little bit. Uh, and Steve is going to be kind of doing most of the presentation. But uh, I'm going to read a legal disclaimer first. And uh, uh, while we do that, Steve's going to find his questions box. So here we go. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. And Metastock should have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So today, uh, we're, we're very pleased to have Steve Bigelow with us. Steve's uh, been a long-term partner, a decades-long partner of ours. Um, uh, I have had uh, the pleasure of working with Steve for at least 15 years now, maybe 20. But like, I remember um, we've done a lot of traveling together. We've worked with Steve very, very intensely to kind of get his patterns all put into Metastock. Uh, not only is he like an exceptionally nice guy, I would credit Steve uh, with uh, me learning more about technical trading than probably anybody else that I've ever worked with. So we absolutely love Steve. The work that we've done in the add-on has been very, very well received. It's one of our best sellers. And I can't say enough about Steve. Uh, we just love him. We absolutely love him. So Steve, how are you doing today? Good, good, Jeff. Welcome, everybody. I'm still looking, trying to find out where I put my, where the heck I just dropped the, uh, the chat box to. Oh, they're up here. OK, now I see. Find it? All right, yeah. cool. OK. All right. It's all yours for it. I'm going to give the floor to you. Um, uh, and uh, I'm, uh, it's all yours, Steve. Thanks for coming okay. in. First, I need to share the screen. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. OK, so you should uh, you should have just gotten the uh, chair presentation. Up. OK, share my screen. And now. Which screen is showing anything? I can see your screen, but uh, the screen I can see is your is your. It looks like a desktop, you like your main monitor. So, okay. all right. So where do I go? We always do this, don't we? Yeah, where? it's easy. So right where and you'll see a play button that says show screen on that console. If you click on the down arrow underneath that show screen, um, it'll allow you to choose different options file i'm trying to find where it says show screen now um, uh, so it's, it's in a it's in a box called sharing sharing okay <laughs> yeah. let's take a look at that now and then you should see a play button that says show screen and there's a down arrow on that play button. okay there we go all right so i think we was it this one that's the right one. Success. Yahoo. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Steve Bigelow. Uh, I accidentally learned candlesticks, well, 30 some odd years ago. So I've got the question box. If you've got questions as we're going along, I guess we're not stuck on any great time frame. So if you have questions, feel free to ask them. Questions, questions. Why is this now not working? There we go. 
Will we get a link? Okay. Uh, Harry, yes. So, anyways, we're doing, uh, we just did a, a training session a couple weeks ago on trend analysis or how to or identify the trend reversals. And that is very important because that allows us to de uh, decide which direction we want to have our portfolio trading. Or if even if you're a day trader, a swing trader, you want to know which direction you're likely to go in. So we have some of the uh, just kind of the general truisms of that have come from the Japanese rice traders. Simple things like, where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. Where do most people sell? They sell, uh, panic sell at the bottom. So through the years, again, I came from being in the process of being the worst investor in the world. And I learned all, I wanted to learn all 50 or 60 candlestick signals. But out of those candles, or 50 or 60 signals I discovered, there's only 12 you really need to learn because these are the ones that are going to occur 99% of the time. And the other 1%, if they occur, probably one of these override it for, for, for whatever you're trading. So I tell people, don't spend a lot of mental time and energy trying to learn all 50. As a matter of fact, just recently, I started looking to see how some of these YouTube videos were showing different signals and they would get 59,000 hits on it. And I'm thinking, what are they showing? And I would look at it and not only was the, the signal incorrectly described, but it was also a signal that probably doesn't occur often enough to even spend any mental time and energy learning them. Now, the next step from knowing that these are the signals that the Japanese rice traders have identified over hundreds of years as being the strong reversal signals, they also identified which patterns were being created by human nature. And this is the uh, strong, uh, uh, I just say strong benefit of candlestick analysis is that we know prices move in patterns. That's just human nature. The Japanese rice traders identified them for them. And so I always ask rhetorically, why are the patterns beneficial? They've got two strong elements to them. One, they're usually producing high probability trend direction. And secondly, the magnitude of the move is usually very strong. So once you learn the signals and patterns, the biggest thing it did for me is if I know what the probabilities are, I'm now eliminating my emotions when I'm making my trade decisions. Uh, I'm going based upon the indicators that tell me that I'm in a high probability uh, situation or, or trend movement. So there's five indicators that you can kind of accumulate to tell you when there's been a trend reversal, whether it's in the market the indexes themselves, which is the first indicator, um, the T-line, the corporate bond index, what I call the biggies and the big financials. So obviously, the first process or the first thing that we do to analyze whether there's a market change is just identifying what the market is doing in, uh, itself. On my charts, you're going to see that we have the 50-day simple moving average and the 200-day simple moving average. They're on here for nothing more than everybody in the world has those on their charts, and most money managers are making their decisions based upon those moving averages. Then we're gonna go into the T-line. I use stochastics because I'm a swing trader. My trades usually last anywhere from two to 10 trading days. But the stochastics, uh, the Japanese rice traders make their analysis extremely simple. If you see a candlestick sell signal in an overbought condition, the probabilities are pretty strong. You're heading in a downtrend. If you see a candlestick buy signal in the oversold condition, probabilities are that you're going to be in an uptrend. So this is what I call observe the obvious. If we know that if you see candlestick sell signals in the overbought area, and again, the dojis are part of your 12 major signals, and there's a simple doji rule. 
the doji rule is the price will usually move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So when you add this all up, you're in the overbought area, you're up here at a, a level that everybody's watching to see if it's gonna act as a resistance level. You see dojis, and this is actually a doji harami, which is another major signal that tells you the buying has stopped. And when they gap it down from this doji, back below the 200, that's a pretty good piece of evidence that they're not going up, they're, they're reversing. And then the T-line, when we get to that here in a second, when they close below the T-line, the probabilities are extremely strong. You're now in a downtrend. So now that I can recognize that we're in a downtrend, there's other patterns. One of the pattern is a J-hook pattern. Usually consists of wave one, wave two, and this J-hook, when they head it back down, puts you into wave three. And we know that wave one and wave three are approximately the same magnitude. So that also allows you to identify how far down this trend is gonna go. Or if you shorted something, you know at least what your magnitude of move will be on that next move. So the definition of market direction is using the, the NASDAQ, the Dow, same scenario. Look at your dojis in the overbought area. Look at your buy signals here, up through the 50, then a J-hook pattern starting off with, again, here's a kicker signal, one of your strongest bullish signals. Here's your downtrend. Here's your bearish kicker signal. Again, one of your strongest uh, bearish signals. So you have everything pretty well mapped out for you of where the probabilities are starting to change in the overbought condition and you're starting to see sell signals, and then you can identify the trend from that point. So a lot of people ask, well, why do you use the Dow? Why don't you use the New York, New York Stock Exchange or uh, the composite indexes? You don't have to. Everybody, the uh, indication of an investor sentiment is based on the Dow, because if you're riding along in your car and they're telling you what the market's doing. They're going, to, they're going to tell you the Dow's up or down, or and they're not going to say, oh, the New York Stock Exchange stocks are up or down. So the S&P also. So people say, well, do you use all three? Yes. You can look at, analyze what's going on in each one of these indexes in a matter of a few seconds. So if we can kind of calculate or identify that we're in a downtrend, obviously, we're going to be trading to the short side. Now, again, there's the 50, there's the 200. Here's the T-line. This is a signal or an indicator that is extremely powerful as far as the probabilities of a price move. The T-line is actually the eight exponential move on average, and it's got what we consider Fibonacci characteristics, meaning it acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature. So I use this, this slide as kind of the most powerful, most meaningful uh, slide as far as candlestick analysis. If the candlestick signals are proven graphics of changes of investor sentiment, and the T-line acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature. When you combine these two, you've got an extremely strong trend analysis uh, analytical tool. Very simple. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Now this is important, it was important for me because there's times where you're gonna see in the overbought area, you see sell signals starting to confirm. In the old days before we put the T-line on our chart, I'd say, oh, let's take profits. Worst case scenario, if it turns around and heads back up, we can always buy it back. Well, usually if I sold something, I've already moved that money onto something else. Now, what that does is it keeps me in the trade and keeps me long, which means 
what is one of our big emotional foopas? Boy, I've got a profit, and boy, would I look stupid if I let that profit go back to being a loss. So I'm going to take a profit just because I have a profit instead of deciding to analyze what is the trend actually doing, not what my, my uh, profit and loss statement is doing. So on the other side, if you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, same scenario. You can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. Again, keeping my emotions out of my trading, saying, oh boy, I got a huge profit so far. Uh, I better just take profits. And the whole point of investing is you wanna try to maximize your profitability based upon what your analysis is, instead of just taking profits for the sake of taking profits. So these truisms are extremely strong or extremely relevant that if you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, you've got an extremely high probability a downtrend is confirming. Now, that works for you in two manners. One, if you're long and you see them closing below the T-line, you take your profits. Or if you're thinking everything's ready to go short, this becomes a good confirmation to start uh, shorting. On the other hand, if you see a buy signal and a close above the T-line, you've got extremely strong probabilities. And I say extremely strong. Anytime I see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, I could be buying. Anytime I see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, if I'm long, I'm closing out the uh, position immediately. Because of one simple factor. If, if you take my word for it, and it, again, I tell people don't take my word for it, Put the uh, eight exponential moving average on your chart and see how often, not only does it stay above the T-line if it's in an uptrend, but it will come back and actually touch the T-line and bounce back up. And the relevancy of that information is, we know the T-line acts as a natural support and resistance level, but nobody has that on their chart. So it's not like everybody's watching to see when I, a, uh, trend or a price comes back down to the t-line and bounces that they're ready to buy it's because they don't have it on their charts it actually kind of uh, uh accentuates the fact that the, it is a natural support and resistance level the t-line is the eight exponential moving average are we using daily charts for swing or uh we have to look over the one hour and four hour you can use whatever time frame you want to. If I am day trading cattle or soybeans or the dollar, I'm usually trading off the 10 minute chart because the basic definition of a candlestick signal is it is the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. They work just as effectively on the one minute, five minute, 10 minute combination as they do on the daily, weekly, monthly combination. Uh, do you use 20, 50, or 200? I use the 50 and the 200. I used to use the 20, but I actually use the 34 EMA, which works uh, relatively effectively. And let, let's go to another chart. Another indicator, I'll, get, I'll answer that a little bit more uh, uh, hard as soon as I uh, get to a chart. Um, the high yield corporate bond index, it's HYG. It has the same implication that if investors are not real confident about the market, that means they're not real confident about the bonds in those, those uh, positions. And so that will usually be an additional in information confirmation that the markets are moving in a specific direction. Whoops, let me get to a better chart with more on it. Also, the biggies. The biggies are things like Apple. If Apple is in a downtrend or an uptrend, that's usually going to confirm that the market is moving in a positive or bearish direction. Right now, you can see Apple is 
trading in this downtrend, which is kind of confirming the uh, uh, the downtrend of the market. Uh, Amazon. There you can see the same pattern in Amazon because it kind of trades with the market, or it is the another indicator of investor sentiment. And things like Netflix. Now, Netflix right now has shown a little bit more strength because of these signals. Look at your bottom of your channel here. Then they gapped it up through the top of the channel. Strong buy signal came right up to the 200. And now is doing kind of a J hook. It was up pretty strong today. So out of the biggies, right now we're seeing some bullish confirmation in Net, uh, Netflix. Now, normally, You'd see all of them moving in the same direction. However, we're at a level in the market, which I'll get to here in a minute, that shows us that we're uh, we're probably at a transition stage where there's might be some buying. I'll get to that. But back to your question, Har, is I use the 34. I don't have it on here. Well, maybe there it is. Now, this is the nice thing about candlestick analysis is we know the signals work, or we wouldn't be looking at them 400 years later. And I always give the, uh, the, the description that the Japanese rice traders did not become wealthy using candlestick analysis. They became legendarily wealthy. They were the financial powerhouse in, in Japan for centuries. And it was based upon one basic factor human nature. So the graphics that they put into candlestick analysis was merely the identif identification of changes of investor sentiment, and they identified the signals and patterns that did that. Darn, I was going, oh, so that means anything else that you add on to your chart is just a confirmation, uh, helps with the confirmation. So if somebody says, put the XYZ in, in, uh, indicator on your chart, you put it on and it doesn't enhance any of your analysis, you take it back off. Because the most important factor is the signal itself and then all the other confirming indicators. So in this case, Netflix did a bullish Harami, then gapped up through the 50 and the T-line through this level, where was the next likely target everybody was going to watch up here at the 200-day moving average? Now, this is one of the patterns that we recognize, a J-hook pattern, starting again with a doji bouncing off the 50 up through the 200. What's the conclusion? That we're probably, probably in an uptrend at that point. Another indicator is the big financials. Whenever you see or you when you see what the direction are, is of Goldman, J.P. Morgan, uh, Wells Fargo. That gives you a good indication of what what the overall market's doing. You're not going to see the financials go up if the market's going down, and vice versa. You're not going to see the uh, market go up if the financials are selling off. So those are just kind of uh, indicators. That now is that a lot of analysis? No, that going through the charts that takes you maybe. 45 seconds to go through all those charts to kind of give an overall analysis of the market direction. So the big financials, if they're selling off, the market is likely confirming that it's or confirming that the market is in a downtrend. So here's where you put two plus two together, which is basically if we can analyze that the market came up here did a bearish Harami doji, started selling off, and it did it right at a level that everybody else could see could be a possible resistance level. That's what I say, observe the obvious. You're seeing sell signals in the overbought area at a level everybody else is watching, and you're starting to see those sell signals confirm. That tells you if you were long positions like Amazon, and it came up and did a doji right here at the 200-day moving average, and then gap down the next day, what's that telling you? It's probably telling you they're selling off with the market 
And where did they do it? Right at a level that everybody else would be making their decisions. That tells us we're now in a downtrend. And the patterns are, in this case, are all the same. There's wave one. Where did it move to when they sold off at the 200-day moving average? Right smack dab back to the 50. What did we see at the 50? Started seeing buying. So if we had been short Amazon, this becomes a high probability area to start covering your short position. Might be going long, but there's your bearish kicker signal. Told me if I went long here, I better be out because the bearish kicker signal, when they gap down below the previous day's open, that tells you there's a drastic change of investor sentiment. Now, I come back to the fact, and I always kind of say, this is not rocket science. This is just the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment that the Japanese rice traders have illustrated as high probability reversals through centuries of identifying the signals and patterns. Whoops. Harry, that's a whole book here to read. Um, objection. I agree that the candle patterns are important to use along with the 12 signals but in past webinars i recall that you were shown up to eight patterns i believe the patterns are important you should have a clear list of the eight patterns or whatever the number is for example the list here does not include some of the patterns uh the mcmuffin top the bobble the best friend the blue ice failure you don't need to teach all of them in one webinar, but the students should see the clear list of the 12 signals and eight patterns. So, well, I'm, yeah, uh, Harry, that's not the uh, point of this, uh, this presentation. This presentation was more, we're gonna be doing some more. Um, oh, Jeff, what was some of the other ones? Some, some of the high probability reversals. Right now, I'm, what I'm just trying to illustrate is the fact that they, you have patterns, you've got signals, and how using the indicators and the, the patterns give you a much higher probability of being in the right direction at the right time. So we will, yeah, in further uh, sessions, we will be going into the different, uh, uh, more explicit uh, patterns. Right now, we're just kind of hitting the general trend analysis and where trend reversals occur and when how to take advantage of a market trend reversal, all the indicators that kind of confirm that trend reversal, and then how to take advantage of it with individual stock prices. So here's the opposite of the fry pan bottom. This is the dumpling top. This is an indication. You couldn't trade this one way or the other if you wanted to, but when they did this, now you knew what that trend was going to be. Or if you happen to have shorted it right in here, why? Because it was trading back below the T-line. And this is where I always want to illustrate with great enthusiasm. Um, what have I done now to the question and answer? Okay. Um, with great enthusiasm, that if you happen to be long and it closes below the T-line, close it out because the probabilities because of that T-line factor is definitely gone against you. You see something like this. This is, again, look how the bearish J-hook pattern was setting up with kind of a dumpling top and then the gap down, bearish best friend. This kind of alerted you to the fact that look, I shouldn't be long and maybe I should be going short. And this one definitely told me this pattern tells me I should be going short. Uh, is there a way to check whether a stock is being shorted or sell off triggered by hedge funds based upon candlestick patterns or volume in the session? Uh, you don't need to. There's no, a lot of people say, well, should we be buying stocks that are heavily shorted? No, we're buying the price, we're buying based upon the price movement. We don't need to know why people are buying or selling. All we really want to identify is that they are buying or selling. So um, people say, well, the, uh, uh, the uh, I want to say the, 
the inexperienced buy in the morning, the professionals buy in the afternoon. We don't care who is buying or selling. We just want to identify what they're doing. And that, again, candlestick analysis is the, the accumulative analysis of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. So this is what you call a bearish harami, telling you the buying had stopped. And look where it stopped, right here at uh, the 50-day moving average. This is your bearish best friend. Not only did they tell you the the buying had stopped, but when you see a doji gap down, you just kind of analyze that. There was indecision right here. Now they tell you with great enthusiasm which direction they're going. That's going to give you a high probability trade to the downside. Same scenario here. If you see a fry pan bottom, one of your pattern. You can see you couldn't trade this one way or the other if you wanted to until right here. And again, notice our the doji sandwich is you have a big candle. Look where that big candle came to, right to the 200-day uh, moving average, which is also right where the uh, fry pan bottom started. Then they gapped up, or not gapped up, but traded positive and did a doji. That sets us up because if we have a bullish candle followed by a doji, Remember our doji rule? The price will usually move in the direction of how they open after a doji. If they open it positive, look at all the information we immediately uh, kind of evaluate. One, the doji rule, that if it opens positive, it's going to trade positive. Two, it's telling us this area is not acting as a resistance area anymore. And three, if this is a doji sandwich setup, we know the magnitude of this candle is usually going to be about the same magnitude as this candle with the candle with the uh, doji sandwiched in between. And what do we know about the doji? Or I'm sorry, the doji sandwich it implies there's going to be more upside. Uh, Bill Heikenashi is kind of a vanilla method of using candlesticks. It's not something that. Uh, I helped write some of the formulas for Heiken Ashi for a couple investment groups in Texas uh, years ago. It's more for long-term holds, and it's kind of a vanillaized uh, uh, analysis. Again, I've gone through every piece of financial or technical an analysis in my 45 years of trading, which is surprising since I'm only 49. Um, and the most accurate combination is what we're showing tonight, is the signals and the T-line. Again, we've already calculated what the probability factor is, that as long as you're above the T-line, no matter whether you're seeing sell signals or not, as long as you don't close below the T-line, you're still in an uptrend. Now, there is a caveat to that which is if you start moving too far away from the T-line, it's probably going to come back and test it. So that means if you got way up here where the exuberance, again, where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. We can recognize that happening. And if this started moving up here and your T-line was still down here, that tells you you want to be a lot more uh, attentive as far as looking for a candlestick reversal signal. Um, yeah, all we need to focus on the candlestick patterns. T line, uh, the 50, the 200, moving out and keep motions out of trading. Uh, 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 NASM, yes. Now, on a more uh, uh, technical uh, uh, trading, again, I've got the 34 on here, which works reasonably well. And I've taken the three EMA off here, which we call the three T line. I've taken them off, well, I guess you can see it right there. And the three T line works in conjunction with the uh, T line. And that how uh, kind of fine tunes your trading. Again, the further away you move from the T line, the more the, uh, the three T line, but that's a whole different thing. What we really want to look at is what type of patterns 
what signals kind of confirm that pattern is breaking out? And then how long does that trend stay in existence? Again, using the T-line. So the best friend signal. So going back to, oh, who was it, Harry? Saying, yes, we can identify the different signals and how to use them based upon our T-line. So look at your doji doji gap up, best friend in the oversold area, closing above the T-line. What's our buy confirmation? If they're buying the next day, it's confirming this signal. And then how long do we hold on to this? As long as it doesn't close below the T-line. Now, rhetorically, does every move occur like this? Definitely not. But when you get into a position like this, now you know how long to stay. And that's the whole point of this, is trying to find the ones that are gonna produce big profits. Once you're in something like that, your analysis becomes very simple. Even if I see a sell signal, if it doesn't close below the T-line, I just stay long. And what does that do to my emotional decision-making? Oh man, I've got some profits. I better take profits because this might be a sell signal. No, I just sit comfortably until we see a sell signal. So again, two factors uh, from the best friend. We call it your best friend because one, you've got a high probability you're heading in the direction that you can see. And two, usually the price move is extremely strong. Now, we're going to be doing a training. I guess I'll let Jeff go into detail, but it's going to be a full comprehensive training going through the 12 major signals, the patterns, the confirming indicators, and then concluding with the top rank signals and patterns, which are about 15 to 18 high probability trade setups, which are the combinations of signals and patterns like the doji followed by a gap up because once you learn that you'll have a completely different perspective on investing you don't have to listen to all uh the i want to say the so-called experts on the financial news stations telling you oh the market's going to do this or that i mean i once you learn candlestick analysis now you're looking at what people are actually doing, not what the prognosis is or somebody's estimate. You're actually looking what uh, investors are doing for buying or selling their deci or selling decisions. It's the actual decisions. So if you see a strong buy signal and a close above the T-line, you stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal. If you see a sell signal, dumpling top, close below the T-line, you can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and close back up above the T-line. The reason this is important is even in our chat room, I'll see so many people say, well, I had a good profit, so I was going to take profits, which has nothing to do with what the overall price is doing based upon the charts. And this is where a lot of people kind of cut their nose off in spite of their face. The whole point of investing is you want to cut your losses short, which the candlestick charts allow you to do by telling you if you get into a trade and it it didn't work, you're right back out of it. And if you get into a good trade, you want to stay long and let your profits run. And the graphics of candlesticks allow you to do that. So observe the obvious. There's your high probability sell signals, bearish engulfing, bearish engulfing right here at the 200 day moving average. There's your downtrend. Never closed above the T-line. Now look what's happening. You're in the oversold condition. You have doji doji bullish confirmation closing above the T-line followed by a doji sandwich. Our recommendation was based upon what do we expect coming out of a doji sandwich? More upside. So essentially, every time we analyze or uh, look at buying or selling something, it's based upon a high probability result of what's happening in human nature. Same scenario on the bearish side. 
You got a very stodgy sandwich and a close below the T-line. We could go short. Now, right here, remember our uh, truism about the uh, T-line. The further away you move from the T-line, especially down here in the oversold area, the higher the probability is going to come back up and test it. So if we were short, we'd be covering our short, covering our short position on this day. Because there's your doji, then bullish confirmation. Where do you think the next likely target's going to be? Back up to the T-line. Now what do you do? Well, didn't have a lot of conviction going through the T-line, then they gap it back down. Now what can we analyze as the next move? There's our bearish J-hook pattern. So we may have covered our short positions here, and we may be adding them right back on right here. There's your bearish best friend. Now, if this occurred at the same time the market was rolling over, what's the best way to make profits during a price move? We want to find the strongest sell signals during that next move to the downside, or we want to make as much hay as we can while the sun's shining. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the strongest bearish signal, like your bearish best friend. Covered positions here. If we decided to go along, there's our bearish kicker signal. So if we know this is a bearish kicker signal, that if they gap it down below the at or below the previous day's open, and start trading lower, that's a strong bearish signal. Which means if we happen to be long and we see they're opening down here, what do we do? We close it immediately because the probabilities just went against us. We wanna be out of that trade. And now we wanna be looking to see to go short because now we can recognize what this pattern is gonna be, a bearish J-hook pattern. Bullish. Scenario, there's your bearish or bullish best friend right off the 50. There's your J hook pattern starting with a bullish kicker signal. So you got wave one, wave two. There's your J hook wave three to the upside. So I'll even go a little bit further. You're up here in the overbought area, that far away from the T line in the overbought condition and it closes here, where do you put your stop the next day? Your safety stops right here uh, at the low of the doji, because if they trade back below that level, what's our doji rule? They're gonna trade in the direction of how they open after a doji. If you're that far away from the uh, T line, where do you think the next target's gonna be? Back here, so you, you get out right there, optimizing uh, your profits. So these are all indicators that tell us what the direction is of investor sentiment. And when we recognize them, we can take advantage of the next price move. Obviously, you're in a downtrend on this one. We recommended shorting this one right here because we had a bearish best friend that told us we're back below the T-line, look for the next wave to the downside. There's nothing tricky about candlestick analysis. It's kind of a, I call it a hybrid of taking everybody's fundamental decision-making and putting into a graphic depiction and then using technical indicators to confirm what's going on in investor sentiment. So there's Fizz, there's your dumpling top, just kind of a crummy, rounding top until they break it down. Now you're in a downtrend until you see a buy signal. However, this is where your entry and exit evaluations basically are, basically are based upon the probabilities. That if we know that you have a dumpling top and a strong sell signal, you're in a downtrend. Now we're in a, still in a downtrend and we really haven't seen any buy signals yet. However, where we are, we're in the oversold area and we're starting to see buying. What's that telling us about our probabilities down here? 
well, we're probably not going down very much more. So why don't we take our profits, even though we haven't seen an absolute buy signal on a close above the T line, because the probabilities are now turning against us. So there's, they're leveling out, they're buying. Let's take that money and go find another trade that has much greater uh, uh, profit probabilities. Um, So here's today's trading. And I always point this out. I say to our chat room, uh, my website is www.candlestickforum.com. We've got two chat rooms going during the day. One's the stock chat room, one's the options chat room. But this is a, a method or a, a good way to learn candlestick analysis in a much more... Uh, expediting ma manner that you've got uh, i think we usually have about 150 people in the uh, main room each day but it's where you get two benefits one you've got experienced people using candlestick analysis identifying signals and patterns that are setting up so you've always got a constant supply of trades to work off of and two if you look at something saying well you can come back and say, why are you recommending XYZ or what do you see in XYZ? And you'll have somebody say, well, it's doing a best friend signal or it's doing this signal or that signal. And so you learn a lot faster what the signals and patterns are that are gonna create the strongest price moves. But I say, this is a warning. We had a big bullish day today, but I always have to ask everybody in the chat room, what signal did it produce? today well this isn't actually a signal notice how it opened above yesterday's close and then closed well above yesterday's open this is where that's not a signal there's nothing in the candlestick uh, uh, charts or uh, signals and patterns from the uh, uh, Japanese rice traders that shows that that's a signal so the rationale is, if this is not a signal, or if this was a relevant signal, the Japanese rice traders had 400 years to tell us what it is. If it's not a signal, that means you want to be a little bit more cautious that this may just be an up move and a downtrend. Or, like we saw over here where this same scenario occurred, it wasn't a uh, reversal signal which told us you about want to be careful on this move or this move might not be as uh, forceful because of a lack of a signal. So right now we're covering short positions, but we're watching to see if we've had a wave one, wave two, wave three, which now would be wave one, maybe a wave two and get ready for another wave three to the downside. So these are kind of little subtle pieces of information that tell us when there's an actual reversal and when there's not a reversal. And if it's not a reversal, even though you might have a uptrend, it's probably not gonna be as forceful as if this had been a reversal. So if I know we might have some upside, what are we looking for to take advantage of that move to the upside? We're looking for the strongest signals like a best friend gap up in, in Knox today. Or Netflix, you can see kind of the fry pan bottom and look at this little signal here. This is your kind of your kicker signal, not a strong kicker signal, but they gapped it up and moved in this direction. So what's the implication of Netflix? It's probably still heading up and where would it really be breaking out right through here? If it broke out through that level, what can we assume? We've got a wave one, wave two, now going into wave three. Whoops, I'm making sure I'm not keeping everybody out of. So here's one of your strongest reversal signals in Daku. Look at how Daku started the downtrend. There was your, your gap down, there was another gap down. And notice, uh, 
and one thing that I always point out to people that it's quite often that if a price is moving up in a downtrend, they hit right at the T line and then trade off. That's another strong indicator that when they do that, that we're still in a downtrend. And the reason that's relevant is, once again, nobody has that on their chart. So it's hitting that natural support and resistance level. Now, this is what we call a bullish flutter kicker signal. Out of the 12 major signals, the kicker signal is your strongest individual candlestick signal. It tells you that it's been kicked in the opposite direction. The bullish flutter kicker signal is kind of that same in indication, except it allows you to identify when a reversal is about to occur. Because notice what the configuration is here. Opens here, closes here. The next day, they gap it up at or above the previous day's open and do a doji. That tells us there's a setup coming because what is it already done? It's already gapped up from the previous day, even though that doesn't look very decisive. However, when it does a doji, what's our doji rule tell us? It's going to move in the direction how they open after a doji. So if it opens positive, we're already ready for it. We can be buying immediately, knowing that if it's, it's going to move positive, it becomes a bullish flutter kicker signal, which if you took out this little flutter, you basically have a kicker signal. And that's the strongest of our candlestick signals. So what does that imply? You could be buying this one on positive trading tomorrow which is also going to be a function of identifying to see what the markets are actually doing. So if they're opening positive and trading positive, continuing today's up move, that means that becomes a high probability trade setup. There's your best friend on OPCH. This illustrates there's been a very strong reversal. And again, the kick or the best friend signal is our top ranked signal and pattern number one for three elements. One, again, because that's telling you of a high probability direction. Two, the magnitude of the move is, is strong. And three, why do we have this rank number one versus a kicker signal? Because the frequency of this signal is a lot more than a kicker signal. You might see 10 best friend signals for every kicker signal that you see. So just it's because you've got a, uh, a lot more frequency occurring. So another confirmation is if you see strong buy signals, this is Royal Caribbean. If you see strong buy signals, there's your bullish flutter kicker signal looking like it's setting up a J hook pattern in this uptrend. That's saying, all right, Looks like the uh, cruise lines are picking up steam. Well, another way to confirm is you check Carnival, you check uh, uh, Norwegian. If they're all doing bullish signals, that's a pretty good indication. They're buying that sector across the board. So we're trying to find the strongest one in that sector. Same thing, they started buying the oils today. Kind of a bullish flutter kicker signal in Apache. So is this just an... Uh, an outlier of uh, uh, they're buying this one oil. Now you can check all the other ones. If they've got strong bullish signals, that means they're buying that whole sector. So now we're trying to find the strongest uh, uh, one in that, in that sector. So everything that we look at has reasons or confirming reasons that there was buy signals occurring at those levels. We recommended SNDX today because you could see what was happening. They came right back to the 50 and then showing buy signals. And so basically our buy signals are telling us that's where people are starting to buy as uh, it's supporting off the 50. So we were buying on the basis of what do we wanna see? We wanna see it break through this level. If it does, what do we got going on? Wave one, wave two, showing very strong probabilities that they're buying at the support level of the 50, looking for wave three. Now, 
We also know when to get out of a bad trade. If this opened positive and traded positive, yahoo, it broke out. But then if it came back and closed below the halfway point of this candle, what would that tell us? They didn't break out. They're still stuck in this area to close out the trade. One of the statistics that I, I teach people in our trainings is 30%. When I was first became a stockbroker and looking at commodities, they said, if you can get 50% of your trades positive, you're going to make tons of money based upon cutting the bad ones off as uh, small losses and let the bullish ones run. Through the years, probably 70% of the candlestick trades are going to trade positive, which I thought, man, I'm going to make a fortune knowing that statistic. But the other statistic you have to keep in mind is 30% of your trades might not work. So it used to be if I put on a trade and it didn't work, I took it so personally, I'd say, well, what's wrong with you? How come you're so stupid? What didn't you see? You just beat myself up. But as soon as I realized that not every trade's gonna work, now my mentality turns around and says, all right, that trade didn't work, close it out. Don't commiserate about it and take that money and go find a trade that has high probabilities of working. So everything I've done through the years, being the worst investor in the world, is getting my emotions out of my trades. So I'm trying to find everything that is dramatically improving the probabilities of I'm in the right trade at the right time. So if I can see an uptrend, today's people pointed this one out in our chat room. Look at the doji, doji, doji right here on the 34. And now, that's our little, these are inverted hammers. You can see how they came up and closed the low end of the trading range, except there's a very strong indication from an inverted, inverted hammer. And this is, again, my statistical uh, confirmation or analysis through the years is that if you see an inverted hammer, especially in the oversold area, and it trades positive, the probabilities are about 95% or even better that you're now going to be in an uptrend, which also makes for a very easy stop loss. If we know that statistic, or if you take my word for it on that statistic, we know that if we buy off that inverted hammer and it came back and closed below this level, you close it right, right out. It didn't work. So not only does the charts tell us when to get in, it tells us when something didn't work and get right back out. So this is what keeps your emotions out of your trading. Knowing what the results of your signals are, what the expectations are, and then using the T-line to tell you to stay long. Again, there'd be so many times I would take profits because it looked like, oh, I'm smart. I can see a pet sensor sell signal. But as soon as I started putting the T-line on my chart, I my Profitability, which was good after being the worst investor in the world and when started using candles, became a heck of a lot better. Do I always get trades like this? Definitely not. But it improves my probabilities that if I see buying or a buy signal and get into a bullish trade, I don't have to do very much analysis after that. I just stay long until I see a sell signal and it close back below the T-line. Same scenario on the short side. If I see a sell, I can stay short and I can keep thinking, oh man, I got good profits. Should I take profits? I just tell myself, no, wait till you see a buy signal and a close above the T line. Whoops. So out of the 50 or 60 signals, there's only 12 that you need to learn. These are the ones that are going to occur 99% of the time. The other ones, I tell people, you don't have to spend a lot of mental time and energy learning them. All you really need to do is recognize them. I, get, I even go back through my own books and browse through and say, oh, yeah, that's a signal. Not that I want to learn what it is, but if I happen to see it again out on a chart and say, oh, hey, that looks like two dark crows. Uh, let me go back and look and see what two dark crows mean or 
three white soldiers. Things that uh, are signals, but they occur often enough. But at least if I recognize them, I can go back and find out what they, what the, uh, what they're indicating. And again, why are the patterns beneficial? Because not only do you have a high probability of it moving in the direction you expect coming out of that signal or, or that pattern, but the profitability is much greater. So anytime we see a new trend or in a trend, what ones do we want to be in? We want to be in the price moves that have much greater uh, profitability than just merely being in a stock that's moving in the, in the same direction. Oops. No wonder there weren't any questions. I'm sorry, did I goof this up? Oh man, sorry. I walked and say, why is not why aren't there people asking questions? I mean, I'm going to have to go back and up. Oh, let's see how many do we have. Oh, that was the last one. So, especially with Meta stock and scans, which we have all our information on the uh, Meta stock scans is. Not only does it identify the signals and patterns for you, but then it also describes what it is. I'll let the, I'll let Jeff kind of go into that more. But hold on, I'm sorry. I was wondering why isn't people asking questions? I must be more dull than I normally am. Um, is there a way to check whether stock need to do that? Do you have opinion about Heikinashi? Heikinashi is vanilla. Use the eight exponential move on average, and you'll be way, way ahead. Um, how do you use the 34? Just throw it on there. It's the 34 EMA works relatively uh, successfully, meaning there's a lot of times where it's acting as a support and resistance level. And again, it comes back to you can put whatever you want to on your chart. As long as it's improving the probabilities of identifying when reversals are occurring. So, do I use Fibonacci numbers? No. But if I see a pullback and a strong uptrend, I'll just throw the Fibonacci numbers on to see where that price might be coming back to and seeing at what level there might be a, a candlestick reversal signal. And I can say, well, that's the level that they're going to start buying. So, let's get ready to see if that signal is going to confirm. How well does the T-line work with short-term credit spreads? Uh, it doesn't matter what you're doing as far as your trade, uh, Bill. It's You're using the charts to tell you what, uh, what strategies to be putting on. Uh, oh, boy. Let me go see if I can go back. I eh. oh, I can go back, go back. So there are times where the strategies, and this is what we I teach in the uh, options training. Um, where are where is the best strategy? I might be buying puts in here, but as it's going down, what's my risk reward? It's getting less, or uh, risk is getting higher because we're already in a downtrend. I might not be bought, buying more puts here. I might be putting be putting on uh, 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 put spreads because it kind of mitigates the risk a little bit and still, if it moves in the right direction, produces some good profits. The 34 is the exponential moving average. The 50 and the 200 are simple moving averages. So I get a lot of questions that say, well, why don't you use the exponential on the 50 and the 200? Wouldn't that be more accurate? And the answer to that is, we're not using those to make our decisions. We're using those moving averages to see what everybody else's decisions are, because that's what all the major money managers around the world use for making their decisions for their buying or selling for their portfolios. What do you recommend to put the uh, stop loss for day or swing trading? Uh, that's still based on, you know, we got some stop loss uh, common sense uh, formulas. For example, let me see if I can. For example, if we saw a buy signal here and 
uh, let's say this was a 10-minute chart of something. Well, we might be ready to, to cover our short position on a 10-minute chart if it trades back up above the T-line. So it's still a function of not a formula. A lot of people kind of relay the information that their advisors said that if it pulls back 3%, 5%, 7% from where you bought it, close out the position. The answer to that is the market doesn't give a hoot where you bought it. The price trend is going to be based upon what investor sentiment is telling you. So you find a level. So if I shorted, let's say, let's say I shorted right here. What's my simple logic? I don't want to see it close back up above this level. Um, if I shorted it and it closed here, and we think we're still in a downtrend, my next day is very simple. If it opens positive, I want to close out the position. It better open lower and trade lower. So our stop loss, we do training on stop losses. And again, it's a simple logic of where would the investor sentiment have told us uh, things are changing. Do you long at yellow spot? Do or do go long at yellow spot? Uh, Harpert, I, you got me there. I don't know what that means. Do you use a 30 minute chart to fine tune the train trade? I use or everybody should use what they uh, what they're trading. If you're a swing or if you're an intraday trader, I used to trade the E minis off the one minute, three minute, 10 minute combination. Right now, I trade soybeans, cattle, uh, the dollar, intraday, and I'll use the 10 minute as my bellwether. If I get ready to buy, I swing down to the five minute. If you don't want to be trading that active, maybe use a 10 minute, 30 minute combination. So you use whatever your time frame is and you just kind of analyze, all right, what what is my combination for the time frame I'm trading that most accurately tells me to stay in or get out of a out of a trade uh, during that time frame? Okay, bullish Harami. Bullish Harami. Uh, so is that finishing the question? Uh, bullish Harami. Bullish Harami tells you the. Selling has stopped. Do you use candle volume to identify changes in trend? Uh, John, no. The number one element is price. Now, if I don't have price on these charts, but if on this day there was a huge volume spike, that would just be added fluff confirmation that, yeah, there's been a major change of ownership. So it acts as a little additional confirmation. A lot of people say, well, I'd like to see the volume go up as the price goes up. Volume and price have absolutely nothing to do with each other. If a price is going up and nobody's willing to sell, it's gonna go up on lower volume. We're still trading the most important factor of, of price movement, and that is price. Again, everything else can work as a, a confirming indicator. If inverted hammer works in oversold condition, does a hammer do the same in the overbought condition? A hammer, an inverted hammer uh, in the overbought condition, meaning it spikes up and comes back to the lower end, that's a shooting star. If it does a hammer signal in the oversold area, again, that's the hammer signal, if it does a hammer formation in the overbought area, that's now a hanging man's signal. Again, one of the, they're all part of the 12 major signals. Do you follow the S&P E-minis? Uh, I don't follow them, but each day, if I'm watching what the market's doing, I'll usually put the Dow up and then I'll put the 10 minute uh, YMs up. And I've got, traders that trade the e-minis. So again, candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. Doesn't matter whether it's stocks, bonds, uh, 
currencies, indexes, tulip bulbs. Anything that has fear and greed in it is what the graphics of uh, candlesticks uh, illustrate. How can one use time and price action analysis to catch buy and sell signals? Oh, uh, I don't think you need to. It's the signals that are telling you that the, there's a change um, of investor sentiment. That's so. Again, if I was looking to find a buy signal, and my 10-minute chart intraday was telling me, well, it looks like a hammer signal setting up, then I flip to the five-minute chart and see if that is still moving in the direction that would confirm uh, the buy signal setup. You can use these signals on intraday charts. Yes, they work on all time frames. How can I find out which stocks are in an industry? You mentioned cruise lines. How do, how do I find out? Oh, uh, uh, boy, Jeff. Um, yeah, we actually, in Metastock, we list them by industry. So if you're looking for stocks in a specific group, you can actually just go into the industry groupings and it'll they'll list out all of the bank stocks or all the cruise stocks or whatever group sector you're looking at. Um, if you don't have access to Metastock, you could get it. Uh, you could also uh, Google what stocks are in the cruise industry. So right. there are a couple of different ways you can do that. It's a good question. Steve, since you had a question, uh, or since I, since I cut in, um, we did have a question off of YouTube. Uh, MP wants to know if you prefer tick charts, one minute charts, or what intervals do you prefer? It all, again, I don't use tick charts. I don't need to. I'm a swing trader. So my stock positions are based upon the daily charts. If I get want to get ready to fine tune something, let's say uh, it's very easy. We've got entry strategies that show you when the probabilities of that trade is, is confirming. And so if Let's say, for example, we have a buy signal. Then the next day, the chart that we were about ready to buy or the stock we were about ready to buy opens slightly lower. Well, we just wait for it to come back up through the previous day's open, which tells us the bulls are still there. So, um, so I don't need to use tick charts. I don't need to use anything else other than the chart itself. And if I'm getting ready to buy and it's, you know, part way into the day, maybe I'll flip to my 10 minute chart to see what the market itself is doing and what the stock I'm looking at is doing. Uh, a candlestick may be different on a 30 minute versus a daily chart. Yes. It, all it's telling you is that the 30 minute for the last 30 minutes, something might be selling off. But overall, the daily chart is telling you it's still working relatively bullish on the day. Does a hanging man have the same meaning in an overbought condition as an inverted hammer in an oversold condition? Uh, yes. A hanging man, if you know what a, well, let me see. A hanging man, I'm still going back trying to find. A chart where I can find a few signals. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, this is kind of a hanging man signal. Now, up here in the overbought area, it would be considered a hanging man. If it was down here in the oversold area, it would be considered a hammer signal. Whereas an inverted hammer signal down here, uh, which one's worthy? Inverted hammer signals. An inverted hammer signal in the oversold area looks like this. But if it was up here, that same formation would now be called a shooting star. And once you understand that information of, notice the doji up here at the top. I told you get ready for profit taking or get ready to close out the position. An inverted hammer in the oversold areas. Told you if you saw buying, your next uptrend is starting. So taking the signals 
and identifying which direction they're likely to move or a price is likely to move, at least now you can identify, well, this might be setting up for the next wave to the upside. Okay, any more uh, questions from? Uh... No, I think we're I think we're good on the YouTube side. All right. Well, I guess the bottom line to everything I look at is the probability factor is if you're seeing buy signals in the oversold area, you're likely to see a reversal. If you're seeing candlestick sell signals in the overbought area, you start looking for profit taking. So no matter what, uh, what uh, trading strategy you might be using, if you overlay candlesticks on your chart, it'll make it that much more clear of what is actually happening. So I use, the, use it the other way. I use candlestick analysis as my top criteria or my number one criteria. And then I can add everybody else's indicators, Fibonacci, numbers, trend lines, moving averages, uh, Bollinger Bands, anything else that you could use to kind of confirm or enhance the uh, probabilities of that trade working. Now you use it to, again, to uh, get additional confirmation that a reversal has occurred. All right, that's about all I got, Jeff. Uh, let me un my, mute my mic. Uh, okay. so John says, thank you. Uh, uh, you're welcome, John. Uh, great job today, Steve. I appreciate it. Uh, right. There's been a lot of questions tonight about the recording. And so if you're watching on YouTube, um, it's the same link. You can just keep save the link. You can come back to it later. If you registered and you're watching the session and go to a webinar like you are, Bob, um, what will happen is within about an hour, we're going to send you a copy of the recording. So uh, within about an hour of when we shut down the session, you'll automatically get the link up to that YouTube channel. So if you uh, are watching the YouTube, uh, one thing I would ask you to do is to like and subscribe. Uh, we're always doing really good videos like with Steve. And uh, if you want to see more great videos, uh, that's a good way to make sure you see them when we pop them out there. Also, liking helps a great deal, and we appreciate it. Just as we appreciate you tonight, Steve, that was a great class. I'd like to talk about the special class we're doing uh, a week from Saturday, if you don't mind. Go right ahead. All right, very cool. Uh, we did uh, one of our, as we as we mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, one of our our boxes that controls the screen actually died this today, so uh, a brutal death. So I won't have a camera for the rest of the day. But that's okay. We've got everything else to run live, and hopefully you guys can hear me okay. And uh, we just grabbed the duct tape, and uh, we got it working again. So let me go ahead and just kind of uh, – uh, I do want to show a few things here. And I think, um, uh, Greg, let me know if you're having an issue seeing my screen and the proper screen. But everything should be looking good. The first thing that I want to talk about is all the work we did with Steve on our Candle Profit Systems 2.0. I'll just kind of talk about the work that was done with that. Obviously, we're on the second version of that. This has been uh, one of our most successful add-ons that we've released. Uh, it's an add-on I'm really proud of because of the work that we put into it and, 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 and honestly, how well it's been received. Um, uh, we've, we actually, the first time when we did CPS 1.0, we uh, sent it over to Dennis Peterson, and he reviewed it, and he really liked it in Stocks and Commodities magazine. And then uh, uh, several years later, like five, 10 years later, we did the 2.0 update. And with that one, we actually had that one reviewed by Barbara Starr over at Stocks and Commodities magazine, and he, she absolutely loved it as well. Uh, it's also one of our most prolific add-ons. It's been very, very well received. And I think it's because people really like, uh, well, Steve's patterns. Uh, but also the ability to scan and find them. And uh, uh, Rhonda actually asked some questions in YouTube about how the scanning works. So I'm going to show that really quickly and just kind of give you an idea of how this works in our Metastock program. If you're not familiar with Metastock, it's been rated number one in its price category for like 29 years in a row. And here's a list of the patterns it finds. So the, uh, the fry pan, the doji at the top, the doji best friend. The series of doji bearish, the series of doji. These are all automatically displayed in the platform. 
And um, in addition to that, we've got several of the single day patterns you talked about, like the doji, the bullish, engulfing, the hammer. Those are all displayed on there. To kind of give a visual of kind of how that looks, I just wanted to show you a chart with the, uh, the analytics attached to it. And what you see here, this is a chart of Costco. I, I like to trade Costco. Uh, but what you'll see is all these patterns are identified. So right here, you had a bearish doji sandwich. Um, followed by a nice significant move down, had a dumpling top here, a doji, a doji sandwich. And you notice that all of these patterns that were on that screen are actually automatically identified for you. Uh, you don't have to do anything. All the moving averages are on there. The stochastics with the 1233 settings are on there as well. Uh, but they're all kind of just pointed out for you. Um, the other thing I really like about it is the way we've integrated the commentary. So if I, I'm going to show that to you real quick as well, if I got a view uh, expert commentary right here. I can go back to this doji at the top pattern. And right here, it says exactly what this pattern is. It's a doji uh, followed by a gap down. Kind of gives you some ideas in terms of how to read that. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger uh, just by zooming in a little bit here. But traders can go short after the doji followed by a bearish gap with prices in the overbought area kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking for. And a lot of times what you're going to do is you're going to find these patterns because you've scanned for them. So you can go in here and uh, uh, I like to scan for like the doji best friend, or the doji at the top. Those are opposite patterns, but they're the same thing. They're a doji followed by that gap, either up or down. That indecisive bar, as, as, as Steve likes to say, followed by that gap down. Uh, these enhancements, if you have a list of doji best friends or dojis at the tops, these will give you an idea of kind of what to look for to find the better of maybe three or four different patterns. So that commentary is really, really good. The add-on is really, really good at helping you identify those and visually learning the patterns just because you're seeing them. Uh, for scanning, uh, easy. All you come in here, this is what we call the power console in Metastock. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the scan right here. And um, uh, I'm just going to kind of come in here and I'll list all the CPS scans. CPS stands for Candle Process Systems. And you'll notice there's like a couple of universe scans at the bottom. These will help you build a watch list. So if you run this scan, it'll, it'll filter out all the stocks that are below $5 or don't have an average volume of 200,000 shares. So you can save that list and scan it every day. But these other scans, like this Doji Dynamite, if you're looking for that Doji at the top or the Doji Best Friend, you can basically say, hey, I, I want to find that, okay? Or it'll also find the left right bullish combo, the left right bearish combo. Very, very easy to do. In fact, you can select all of these patterns if you wanted to. I have a couple for some reason that are selected. I'm going to unselect those ones and then go back to that CPS list. But if I wanted to run a couple of these scans, I can just run them. Um, and I could run all, all of them if I wanted to. Now, uh, we also, just as part of Metastock, we get all of our data through Definitive. Um, there's coverage for just about anything that you want. Like we have 321,000 issues available right here in our Metastock list. And that would include like, if you're, uh, we could, if you're in India watching us, uh, good morning, thanks for coming. Uh, but if you want to scan India, we do have the National Stock Exchange of India as well as the Bombay Stock Exchange, as well as the futures exchanges. There's about two or 300 exchanges that we use. So you can scan just about anything that you want. We had the question about how do I know what stocks are what, in, are what in industry or what sector. And so I was actually looking at that, and here's a listing of all the stocks. So if you want to find something in particularly like, well, let's just say banks, right here, there's a list of, you can just scan the list of the banks. Uh, so it, it makes scanning very, very easy. Uh, there's listing under North America for all the optionable stocks, all of the ETFs, uh, all of the exchanges, whether they're here in the US or Canada. Uh, so you can scan whatever you want. What I typically do just to kind of keep things easy is I'll typically scan the S&P 100, uh, the NASDAQ 100, and uh, the S&P 500. So um, that'll give me a list of stuff that I can scan. Once I've selected the scans that I want to run up here and the list I want to scan against, I can just hit the Start Scan button. It's going to go ahead and run through the scans for me, and it'll come back with a list of just those ones I have. So scanning is super easy uh, in Metastock. And that's one of the things I really like because for me, I work uh, a very, I have a very busy day during the day and I usually can come in at, at about uh, 20 minutes before the market closes 
run an exploration and just get the results back for what I'm interested in and what I want to see. And that works really, really well for what I'm doing. So that's in a nutshell, the, the what we call the add-on for Metastock. It's gonna include those six explorations, the expert advisor, and 36, all 36 of the patterns that was listed in those two different screens. So there you go. Um, normally the retail price on the uh, candle profit systems is $4.99. We do offer that with a 30 day money back guarantee. But today we're doing something a little bit more exciting. So um, uh, every, what we're going to do is we're gonna sit down uh, a week from Saturday. So not this Saturday, but the next Saturday. It's gonna be Saturday, October 8th at um, 8 a.m. Eastern time. And we're gonna sit down with Steve and Steve is gonna conduct a six hour lesson. Uh, so if you thought he was good today, you should see him for six hours. During that camp, he's gonna talk about market trend analysis. He's gonna be talking about uh, uh, identifying the best, the most robust candlestick trade setups, trade entries, uh, when to close a trade, uh, what confirming indicators you can use and how to reveal when the trade is going to take profits. Uh, he's going to be talking about the 12 major patterns, uh, the 12 major signals, the high profit patterns, where to put stop losses. That's such a simple thing, but something that's such so fundamental to the success is like, where do you get out? Well, they'll talk about where to get out, but also where to put it in stop losses so that when you're wrong. And then what confirming indicators dramatically improve the probabilities of trend reversal. So this is a class we do with Steve. Um, uh, we're going to do it on October 8th, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time. So uh, that'll be 8 a.m. here in Utah. We're going to sit down and we'll be doing six hours of five training. I'm going to be listening. I'm going to actually be taking notes. I love it when Steve talks because uh, not only is he a lot of, I find it, he's a very, very good instructor. I usually learn something new from him every time we talk. And um, if you come to the training, you're also going to have uh, access to the recorded sessions after uh, uh, after you log into our metastock.com website. So what we're doing today is, remember, I said that that training for the uh, the CPS by itself was $4.99. The retail price on that training is uh, $8.99. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put together a bundle package where you can get the training, the boot camp, the Metastock, uh, you can get a free month of Metastock real time as, as well as our market data and unleash the power of Metastock as well. The retail cost on just the training and just the bootcamp is $13.98. So and we'll throw in a free month of Metastock if you need it. But just the retail for just the training and the bootcamp put together, or just the add on in the bootcamp put together is $13.98. The special that we're going to do as part of the, the promotion that we're running for the next couple of weeks. It's six ninety eight. It'll get you that add on. That's five hundred bucks by itself, and that six hour training class. So uh, we'd be happy to kind of help you set up for that. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, give us a call 800-882-3040, or you can go to metastock.com slash sales chat. We also have a page where you can sign up for that online at metastock.com slash candlestick forum d. So uh, Ambrose says, great presentation today. Thanks. Thank you for coming. Really appreciate it. I, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And let's see if we have any questions over here. Uh, Rhonda says, great presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you for coming, Rhonda. And thanks for um, asking the questions about the transcripts. I had no idea about that. So again, I would encourage you uh, to take advantage of this. Six hours of market training, one of our best add-ons, software that's been rated uh, so highly for so many years. Uh, you can get that all together as a bundle package today. All the scanning you need, um, everything to kind of get started. Normally $13.98 for just the trading, just that CPS 2.0. If you do it today, it's going to be $6.98. Uh, so give us a call, 800-882-3040. Uh, chat online with us at metastock.com slash sales chat, or visit us online with at metastock.com slash candlestick for D. You're welcome, Paul. Thanks for coming. Uh, make sure to uh, like and subscribe. Also, I want to say, say <laughs> I want to say thank you to Steve, if I can use English, for coming uh, uh, today and spending an hour with us. But for all uh, the work he's done with us over um, the course of a year, you know, or the course of the decades that we've worked with him, he's been one of our most valuable partners. We absolutely love Steve. I appreciate all the training that he's done with us. Uh, 
we I, we used to travel all over the place uh, doing like lessons, and I've learned so much from. You. I just really appreciate you, Steve. I, I thank you for coming in today. Thanks for everything you've done uh, with us over the years. Uh, Ray asks, what is the monthly cost after the one month period? Uh, Ray, so the, the base price for Metastock uh, at a lease basis would be about $69. So there's some options with that, but the lowest price that you'd be looking at monthly after that one month period is $69. And we can go through that with you on the phone if you want to give us a call, 800-882-3040 or metastock.com slash sales chat. Um, Nestle says, I have the profit systems already. Thank you for using Metastock. Uh, what would be the cost for the bootcamp? That's a really, really good question. Uh, if you already own uh, the CPS 2.0, the cost of the bootcamp would be $4.99. So uh, thank you for that question. Thanks for using the, the CPS 2.0. And I hope to see the class in a couple of weeks. All right. Uh, Rhonda, that's right. That would be Metastock Daily Chart subscription for the $69. Uh, you want to, uh, Rhonda, that's another really good question. So what's the difference between Metastock Real Time and Metastock Daily? Okay, so very, very good question. So Metastock Real Time is our real time version of Metastock. It'll update real time. Um, uh, at the cost for that starts at about $265 per month, uh, whereas our DC version is about $69 per month. And there's ways kind of get both of those prices lower. Uh, the real difference for Metastock is all the scanning is available in either version. Um, it's just whether or not you have access to intraday during the day data. With real time, the other thing is uh, we actually include that with a package that we didn't even talk about today called Metastock Zenith. And Metastock Zenith is a package that they put about a billion dollars into designing. It's literally a competitor to Bloomberg and uh, at a fraction of the price. And uh, all the news and information is actually available through Reuters, uh, but it's our, it, it includes a lot of, uh, if you're interested in news, fundamental data. Uh, it's one of the best platforms out there for that. So uh, with DC, you just have the charts, the ability to scan, the ability to do everything end of day. For real time, you can also get a whole nother package that's, they put a billion dollars into that is one of the best news platforms available. So, and if you do the trial, we will give you access to that billion dollar platform as part of it. You get delayed data in there as well. And you can always decide you wanna do DC um, if you want to later as well, so. Uh, yes, Rhonda, so on Metastock, we actually, so what we do with the CPS, uh, that's a really good question. Um, here, let's go back into it a little bit. Um, on this, uh, with this Metastock and CPS, uh, Metastock's really the engine. Um, and CPS, you could say it's the nav system, right? Or I, I like to use that analogy. Uh, Metastock is uh, kind of the engine that's kind of allowing us to draw these patterns. The add-on actually draws the fact that this is a doji on the top and allows you to scan for it. And so Metastock, you could say, is the car. We've been working on that particular vehicle <laughs> for 30 plus years in a row, it's been rated number one for 29 years in a row by the DC version is by the readers of stocks and commodities. So, but it, uh, what we do here at Metastock is we design this software here in Salt Lake City. We're very, very proud of it. And we're very, very proud of the work we did with Steve to kind of help automate this pattern. So hopefully that answers your questions. Um, Harry, uh, yes, metastock.com slash candlestick forum. D. I'll type that out for you too, um, just so you have it. There you go. And uh, Greg has already put that, or Metastock, the uh, in the control room. Mr. Lewis has put that in the uh, in the YouTube chat already. So, uh, thank you everybody for all the questions. Thanks for coming today. Uh, we'll see you at the next one. Uh, thanks for coming. I hope to see you. Uh, well, we're also doing another free class with Steve next week. You should come to that. I hope to see you at the paid event that we're doing on October 8th. So everybody stay well, um, stay healthy. Uh, we'll see you the next time. Hi, Kelly Clement here from Metastock. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you found it instructive and informative. If you did, what I'd like to invite you to do is go ahead and like and subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps us a great deal and it helps us bring you more awesome content like today's video. So go ahead and like and subscribe and keep on watching.